Okay, for week three, we're going to focus on module 16.1. We're going to break it up into two parts. Part one is going to be the circumference of a circle, and part two is going to be the area of a circle. In each uh, part, we're going to justify and apply each of the formulas. So today, we're going to justify and apply the circumference formula which you guys have probably worked with for a while, it's c equals 2 pi r. So circumference is 2 pi times the radius. All right. So if you take a polygon and you inscribe it in a circle, that just means that the vertices of the polygon actually lie right on the circle. This one here is a triangle that's inscribed. This one here is a quadrilateral that's inscribed in a circle. And then this third one is a pentagon that's inscribed in a circle. What I want you to notice, just by looking at it, that the perimeter of the polygon is getting a little bit closer to the perimeter of the circle as we increase the number of sides. So we call the perimeter of the circle the circumference of the circle. So the perimeter of the polygon is getting closer and closer to the circumference of the circle. Hopefully you would agree with that. But just to make the point a little bit better, I put some numbers on the perimeter, you know, for the lengths and the perimeter of the, the triangle here and the perimeter of, of an octagon. So first the perimeter of the triangle is calculated to be 32.18 and the circumference of the circle 39.30 so a little off there but then I came over here and I did the perimeter of an octagon and the perimeter of that same exact circle and you notice how much closer it is so 38.24 and then 39.30 so super close as you increase the number of sides of the polygon, you can imagine that we're going to be getting closer and closer and closer to the actual uh, circumference of the circle. So I think that does a better job of, you know, uh, explaining it, or at least illustrating that, that we are getting closer and closer as we increase the number of sides. Okay, so with that in mind, let's try to do kind of an informal argument or proof uh, for the formula c equals 2 pi r. All right, so we're going to start with uh, sort of a given here. We're going to say that we have a circle, and we're going to say that the circumference of the circle is pi, and then the diameter of the circle would be 1. Okay, now if that's the case, and this is true by the way, so then the radius would be 1 half. So just keep that in mind. We're going to use that kind of given there to explain the formula c equals 2 pi r. I'm going to come back to that. All right, so let's use our octagon. So that's what I have here. This is an octagon that's inscribed in a circle. We're going to use the similarity of triangles because we've studied similar figures, and so we can, we can understand the argument uh, using similarity of triangles. All right, so we have this octagon that's inscribed in a circle. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide here. Same, same thing. I just took away the circle. I'm focusing on the octagon. So this is the radius. Okay, again, it was inscribed in the circle. So that's the radius. And also, this is the radius. So all of these are little radii, right? All these are little radii. All right. Then let's let this length right here be B as it's labeled. And then I would like to figure out this angle here, this little interior angle. So the way we would do that is we would say it's 360 degrees all the way around. So it'd be 360 divided by eight. So that would be 45 degrees. So each of these little interior angles would be 45 degrees. So I'll just label this one here. And then let's say that I wanted to find out what these other two angles are. Well, we know that this is an isosceles triangle. So we know that two base angles are going to be equal to each other. So what we can do is we can just take 180 and we can subtract 45 
and that would be 135 degrees. And then we can just divide that by two. And that would give us 67.5 degrees. That means that each of these little base angles are 67.5 degrees. Okay, these ones here. Now, all of these triangles are going to be, all these eight triangles here are going to be similar to each other because they're each going to have the same exact situation happen because they're all going to have 45 degrees as the interior angle and then they're all isosceles triangles so they're all going to be similar triangles so i'm going to say that all eight triangles are similar and why are they similar they're similar by the aa similarity theorem so remember that all you need is two angles and that means that the two triangles would be similar by the, the AA similarity theorem. In truth, it's actually all three angles are similar, right? Because that third angle is forced to be the same. But the similarity theorem is AA similarity theorem. Okay, so all, all eight triangles are, are similar. Now that would, that would suggest that we can, we can definitely compare the side lengths. So we can compare, we can say that B can be compared to R, and that would be true, that would be true regardless of the size of the octagon, so, because that's what similarity would tell us. So B, that side length, can be compared to the radius. Again, doesn't depend, I'm gonna write that down, so it doesn't depend on the size of the octagon. All right. Sorry, that's a little messy there. Okay. So so far that's what we've got. We've got we're going to compare B to R. Now because we can compare B to R that would also suggest that the perimeter of the octagon it doesn't you know, the size of the octagon doesn't matter. So that ratio would stay the same uh, with regard to the perimeter of the octagon. So I'm going to compare the perimeter of the octagon to the radius. So this is perimeter of the octagon to the radius of the octagon. Okay. So perimeter to the radius, that would be the same ratio all the time. It doesn't depend on the size of the octagon. Well, remember something, that when we increase the number of sides of the polygon, doesn't that approach the perimeter of the circle or the circumference of the circle? So that would tell us that we can increase the number of sides, and we know that the circumference would have that same ratio so circumference to the radius, that, that ratio, because again, the perimeter, as we increase the number of sides, the perimeter approaches the circumference of the circle. So circumference to radius is going to be the same, same ratio, and it doesn't depend on the size of the circle. So let's move to the last slide, and now we're going to get back to what we started and we said, so I was saying that now we can say that this ratio would be the same, the circumference to the radius. So we said that we have this circle that has a circumference that's pi, and the radius is one half. So we said circumference to the radius, and we're going to say that that's equal to our circle that we started with, which has a circumference of pi, and the radius is one half. So you can write it like this, you know, that's one way to write a ratio. The other way to write a ratio is as a fraction. So we can say circumference to the radius is equal to pi to one half. So now it's a proportion. So we can set those equal, we make it a proportion, and then we can cross multiply. So that would be equal to one half times the circumference is equal to pi r. 
And then we can just multiply by two on both sides. So then we would have circumference equals two pi r. So there you have it, a little informal argument to justify why circumference equals two pi r. So now let's apply it to some problems. I know that was easy, huh? Not. Okay, let's apply it. So we have circumference. So let's start with the formula each time. So circumference equals two pi times the radius. It says given the radius of the circle, find the circumference in terms of pi and to the nearest tenth. So we have circumference equals two pi they gave us the radius, so let's put our eight miles in there. And so then the circumference would simply be 16 pi miles. So that would be in terms of pi. And then if we had to figure it out to the nearest tenth, we would just multiply 16 times pi. And that would be circumference is approximately... 50 point, and that would be 3, and that's miles. Okay, so in terms of pi is this answer, and then to the nearest tenth would be this answer. All right, next problem. The circumference is given, so circumference, I'm just going to write the formula again. Circumference is 2 pi r. So the circumference is given as 10 pi and its feet is equal to 2 pi times the radius. So we're supposed to find the radius. So really simple, we're just going to get rid of everything but the radius. So we're going to divide by 2 pi on both sides. And that would cancel out. And then we would have the radius all by itself. The pi's cancel out. 2 goes into 10 five times. So that would be 5 feet. And that would be it for that. And that really should do it for us. So just a tiny bit of humor, but a lot of truth. All right, and you have a great week.